Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, we're going to talk about the mint family or Lamiaceae or the dead nettle family, as some people call it. Uh, before this video uh, went up, there was one on asters or Asteraceae that you might want to go back and take a look at. These two families of plants will represent a lot of the plants that we use in um, ornamental, ornamental horticulture, and they're used for you know, various things uh, from, from cut flowers to um, plants that are deer resistant uh, to uh, edible plants. And we're going to see that in Lamiaceae just like we saw in Asteraceae. Uh, this plant beside me is called Monarda. Uh, this is a bee balm. Uh, it's almost past. Uh, this is one of the uh, genus uh, that make up uh, Lamiaceae. And then there's a lot of species of different species of Monarda. And so that's what we're, what we're talking about here. I, I have probably uh, where I probably have more plants from Asteraceae because I plant those in big groups, like big groups of zinnias. Uh, I probably have more um, different genuses of Lamiaceae or the mint family. Uh, one of the reasons this is such a big, a big, a widely used group in horticulture is because a lot of them have fragrant foliage, fragrant flowers, and they tend to be resistant to deer resistant to rabbits, not across the board. No, there's no across the boards. And <laughs> when we're talking about a big giant group of plant, a family of plants like this, but many of them are easy to grow. They come from, they, 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 they grow in tough places. Uh, they're showy um, or they're edible. And so there's a lot of uses for them. So uh, Monarda, uh, let's move on. A lot of what we're gonna see in this video are gonna be ground covers, uh, herbs, uh, lower growing um, herbaceous perennials like that monarda that we just saw. But there are also shrubs and trees uh, in this group as well. Uh, this is Caryopteris, uh, which is typically a mid to late summer flowering um, uh, shrub uh, that we use in ornamental horticulture. Uh, there are others as well. And in trees, a uh, teak happens to fall in the uh, Lamiaceae uh, family. Many, many of these have square stems and it's one of the identifiers for this plant family. The shrubs, um, uh, Caryopteris here and one that we're about to see in just a second, actually don't have the square stems uh, as one of their identifiers. One other shrub I have uh, in the garden here, this is a native uh, Calicarpa. This is Calicarpa americana. There are, we have like a couple of species of Calicarpa in North America and then there's lots of them uh, in, uh, in Asia. Uh, this is uh, an interesting one to me. It's got, doesn't have square stem, has a round stem, the flowers, um, um, occur up the stems. Uh, this, there, are, I think there's seven subgroups to uh, Lamiaceae, and Calicarpa is one of about ten plants that hasn't been added to one of the subgroups, which is kind of interesting. It is part of the same family, but it has some very different uh, characteristics. Um, this one will develop a white berry. Um, most of them are purple uh, berrying varieties, but the birds absolutely love them, and the pollinators love the flowers when they're open. Salvia is the uh, biggest uh, genus in uh, Lamiaceae. I think there's like 900 species of salvia. The, um, these do have the uh, square stems. If you're um, for in ornamental horticulture, we can have we'll have annual salvias, perennial salvias, um, marginally perennial uh, salvias. But most everybody watching can grow some sort of salvia that comes back uh, year after year. Uh, one of the things you'll notice on the flowers on uh, on salvias is they're um, bilaterally um, symmetrical. So it means if you could cut this uh, in half this direction, they're identical uh, on both sides. The flowers are designed for you know, different types of pollinators depending on you know, where you are on the globe. Um, you know, each of these has a, you know, some sort of special pollinator. It could be a moth, it could be a butterfly, it could be a, you know, um, the bees will come along on these salvias where they can't reach down the entire length of that flower and they'll just drill a hole back here in the back and uh, they have a little cheat. They have a little cheat for this. Uh, we'll see a couple more salvias before we move on, but I want to point out coleus is actually being uh, in this family as well. I'll prune this one real quick. Hopefully maybe you can see that square stem uh, that's on coleus. Of course coleus is a big, uh, big plant used for, for summer color and uh, coming on just a crazy wide range of colors. But again, you can go out there, if you have some coleus, you go out there and just roll this thing in your fingers like this and see, fill that square stem on it. All right, the salvia that you're looking at right here is called Caradonna, um, one of many different 
uh, salvias that I have in the landscape. Um, it, that thing will bloom all summer again because it, it has the fragrant foliage, fragrant flowers, all parts of the plants are kind of smelly. Um, we, we don't have this, the problem that you have with rabbits and deer that you have on uh, many other uh, many other flowering uh, uh, annuals and perennials that pop up uh, during the uh, summertime. There are many different salvias uh, in this landscape. Uh, here's another example of one. Uh, you know, we have I have a straight species salvia, um, the salvia officinalis in the backyard that we'll see in a minute. Most of these are hybrids. These were created by people um, to be ornamental uh, plants. This one's called summer jewels, and uh, you can see all the little all the little pollinators buzzing about around them. All the interesting things that visit these salvias are amazing. You can't go entirely by the uh, square stems. What you're looking at here is lantana and it's not in uh, Lamiaceae. It's actually in the verbena family. Uh, butterfly bush is in a different family than that uh, as well. And both of those do have um, square stems uh, that kind of present them. But they are in an order called Lamiales, the higher order uh, than Lamiaceae. So they do have some similar qualities to the two of them. So again, there's no you know, steadfast rule for identifying uh, these types of things. Um, there are uh, over overlaps in, in, in many different plant families. Jump into a few of the herbs uh, in, the, uh, in the mint family here. Uh, this is oregano. Um, I think most people, most people know this one and enjoy this one in, uh, in uh, various types of cuisine. Uh, it's an easy, pretty easy plant uh, to, to grow in the landscape and it's a, you know, a perennial, kind of a perennial ground cover. Does get a, a small, ins more insignificant flower than some of the other showier members of this group, but widely grown uh, herb all around the globe. Thyme is another widely grown um, herb and a, a perennial for many of you uh, watching. This is lemon thyme. Uh, there's woolly thyme, which grows a little closer to the ground. There's a lot of different uh, variations of uh, um, uh, thymes that we use for ornamental uh, landscaping that we can also use in cooking. And you can see, again, I was talking about the oregano flowering here. The thyme is uh, in flower and it's, it's got the bilaterally symmetrical flowers, they're just a tiny, tiny version of what we saw on that uh, ornamental uh, salvia that's out in the uh, front garden. I definitely have to show you a mint since we're talking about the uh, mint family. Again, many, many of these have, you know, the fragrant, fragrant foliage. Um, the one thing I'll say, if you're using mint in, a, uh, in your landscape, uh, this one is in a container, uh, so it doesn't, hopefully doesn't escape. Uh, these can be super, super aggressive. Uh, out in the uh, out in the landscape, um, grow very very quickly. Again, that's another theme of this group of plants. Is there many many of them are just very hardy. Uh, is another reason um, that they're, uh, they're 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 frequently used in ornamental horticulture. Of course, there's a lot of different lot of different mints. A lot of breeding has gone on in mints. So we have you know um, mints that are very you know, very pungent and ones that are, that are less so, ones that are just grown mainly as ornamentals and then, uh, you know, many that are grown for our uh, mint juleps. Uh, next to it is a, a, a rosemary. I have a couple different uh, rosemary plants uh, in the landscape. This one's just tucked up uh, in a rock. A uh, rosemary is just a great ornamental, ornamental plant, not a plant that wants to stay wet. Um, um, if it's planted and it's kept a little bit on the dry side, sometimes used on a slope. Just an easy ornamental plant to grow. Beautiful blue flowers on these in uh, cooler seasons. Um, they don't tend to bloom uh, in the heat of the summer, but uh, easy plants to uh, easy plants to grow. And we have again through plant breeding, we have ground cover rosemaries and you know larger growing shrubs that can get can get quite large. Uh, sliding over just to the left of that is another species of salvia. This is Salvia officinalis or um, sage. Uh, another uh, one of our herbs that we use in cooking and another one that has a really a fantastic blue flower on it in, earlier in the spring. Uh, probably will repeat bloom a bit in the fall. Doesn't do a lot of its growing uh, in the heat of the summer, but in the spring and in the fall. Um, it has that super showy bluish green foliage, whether you're using it you know, as a, you know, for cooking or just using it as an ornamental in the landscape. A uh, beautiful plant. This plant family is called Lamiaceae, and Lamium uh, is definitely in that uh, in that in that group. You'll see uh, uh, lots of different uh, Lamium varieties that have been bred for ornamental horticulture. Typically, shade um, 
typically a shade perennials. Uh, this one has a, a beautiful foliage on it, but there's you know white flowering ones, purple flowering ones, but again a similar flower to what you would see on the uh, you know the rosemaries and the uh, and the and the and the other salvias and um, in in this group, but just on a ground cover shade version. Lots and lots of different uh, lamiums. Uh, one other plant that uh, is right here next to me, also in the uh, in the mint family. Here's a juga. I have a lot of different ajuga varieties in the landscape. You'll see again through plant breeding, we've got black foliage and purple foliage and green, and we've got pink flowers and white flowers and all different flowers on these. Typically, again, this is going to be another uh, shade ground cover when we're talking about its use in ornamental horticulture. What you're looking at here in the front uh, is a cat mint. Uh, this is a very popular uh, ornamental. Uh, in, in folks' landscape. So again, it has, because we're, again, we're talking about, you know, fragrant foliage and, uh, you know, fragrant flowers, the uh, rabbits and deer tend to leave them alone. This one's been hybridized like crazy uh, now, and we see more and more cat mint uh, every year being used. Behind it is another one of the, uh, you know, the big uh, herbs that's um, used for, uh, you know, as a, as a culinary herb is basil. And again, um, uh, Something's been chewing on the leaf right there, but just in general, uh, don't, they don't get chewed on a whole lot. Uh, basil will eventually flower. We try to prevent them from flowering when we're growing them uh, in ornamental uh, horticulture. Here, oh, here's one that's trying to uh, to flower here. Um, typically, we, you know, in order to uh, keep them growing all summer, we pinch the uh, flowers off the top of them, get them to branch, and then uh, the plant continues to grow. If it comes to flower, it tends to uh, to slow the uh, growth down on them, but. There we are, two back, you know, side by side, um, basil and cat mint. One other shrub or small tree uh, version of from the mint family uh, in the landscape here is vitex. Uh, vitex uh, is a uh, is a plant that's widely used uh, in ornamental horticulture. This one's called this variety is called summertime blues. So what we're, we're seeing here uh, happens to be from you know a lot of breeding work that's been done to create a more compact plant, more um, floriferous than almost certainly than it would be found. Uh, in the uh, in the wild, again, this is one of those plants that's just super pungent. Uh, you know, you're just standing even close to it, uh, you can smell um, the oils that are in the leaves, and that's going to prevent, uh, typically prevent deer and uh, rabbits from snacking on it. Here's the summer jewel salvia that are planted in the uh, back garden, and you can see uh, it's hard, probably hard to see on this camera. You can see the big bumblebees, and of course we can see honeybees, but it's hard to see even all the much smaller pollinators. And this is true. Just across the board in this plant family, if we're looking at the vitex, if we're looking at any of the herbs, you know, the thyme, oregano, salvia officinalis, uh, the caryopteris in the front garden, the calicarpa, the bee balm especially, you know, it's named bee balm for a reason. Uh, all of these plants are, uh, are, you know, have have pollinators on them and are active, you know, on them and probably right at the top of their list, honestly. Uh, in the garden if you're comparing. You know, I can look at the asters and I can look at the dahlias and I can look at the um, zinnias uh, right now and you will not see as many things flying around uh, as you will on these uh, mint family uh, ornamental landscape plants. Honestly, just wandering around the landscape this morning, I've, I've almost certainly left out other things uh, that I have out here that are in the uh, uh, Lamiaceae. It's uh, just an amazing amount of things that are used in ornamental uh, horticulture and uh, just throughout the world from you know, culinary uses. Uh, there are edible roots uh, also uh, in this group, like uh, Chinese artichokes um, are in that, um, it, in there. And uh, statues, that's, that's where that Chinese artichoke is, is also um, the, uh, another species of that is lamb's ear that you guys are familiar with almost certainly. I don't have any lavender uh, in my landscape another one uh, that's pretty important in this group. And I normally have some Plectranthus. Plectranthus, a lot of the hybrid Plectranthus are similar to some of the salvias that I have in the landscape. Some of them not quite as cold hardy. I had one planted over here for about two years this past winter, uh, did, uh, did do it in. But uh, Plectranthus is another one that's widely used. Um, there are lots of different species of Plectranthus, but many of them have found their way into ornamental horticulture can't escape these videos without talking about weeds. When you have a plant family that are from, you know, that's from all over the world, uh, they've been moved about and uh, of course have created some, you know, we've created some problems from that. And so uh, things like uh, 
De uh, purple dead nettle, which m many of you probably have um, in your <laughs> in your lawns in the uh, late winter with that little purple flower on it that just absolutely goes bonkers. Creeping Charlie, that's another weed that people just you know absolutely despise. Another one that's in the Lamiaceae. So some of these plants get moved around. You know they got moved around in the past and have become you know noxious weeds as a result. I'm going to finish up on one of my absolute favorites, which is Agastache. Uh, this one's called Blue Fortunes. You can see it's a very vigorous growing variety. I have several others in the landscape, some with gold foliage and uh, different types of, uh, you know, again, through plant breeding. Um, uh, this Agastache has become a, uh, a widely used ornamental plant. And again, fragrant foliage, square stems. Um, you, you know, there are some helpful identifiers to at least get you started. Uh, trying to identify something in this plant family. So thank you guys for following along with these videos. Um, uh, asters and, and mints definitely take up the, uh, um, the, probably the two biggest plant families by far uh, in my landscape. But I'm going to continue with these videos and do um, show you some other things that are related uh, in your garden. Thanks for watching.